All right, you've made it to the last lesson of Unit Zero of the review. This is the lesson on logarithmic functions. And I hope you remember from last lesson that we looked at the function e to the x. And we know that it looks like this lovely graph that I'm going to highlight here. It is in continuous and increasing function, so therefore it also must have an inverse. And we also learned to find the inverse, we just switch the x and y values and solve for y. But if you do that with the y to the e to the x equation, you get something like this. x equals to e to the y. And it's hard to isolate the new y by using algebraic methods, because y is an exponent. So we have a new definition for the inverse of e to the x. For the function f of x equal to e to the x, the inverse is called the natural logarithm. And this is how we write it. It's natural log of x, ln x. Okay? So these two forms, the exponential form and the logarithmic form, are equivalent. Now in pre-calc 12, you probably learned something like this, where any base a raised to the power x, the inverse is log base a with x. And so in this case, our base is e. So really, natural log is the same thing as log base e. So notice this natural log is really equivalent to log base e x. All right. A uh, reminder. Oh, yeah, no, oops. <laughs> That's what I just said here. All right. And a reminder that when the base is 10, we usually just drop it because it's the common logarithm. We just call it log x. Now, if you look at the graph of logarithmic functions, there are some properties. And here are all the properties. The log function, of course, is the inverse. So that's this one here. Notice that its domain is x is bigger than 0. The range is all real numbers. Notice now we have a vertical asymptote here. Do, 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 do. Instead of before, we had a horizontal asymptote. So notice that when x approaches to 0, the limit of the y value, or the y value gets closer and closer to negative infinity. Um, but notice here that it doesn't actually flatten out, it actually continues to curve up. So therefore, in point 3 here, the limit as x approaches infinity is also going to be really large. And notice in point number 2, the graph is still continuous, it's increasing. This time it's concaving down, we'll talk more about that when we do more calculus. It still is 1 to 1. And notice some key points here. Instead of having a key y-intercept, we now have a key x-intercept. It's always at 1, 0. And another key point is this point here. It would be a, 1. So the y value at 1 always equals to the base of the exponent. OK? So what I'd like you to do now is actually compare the graphical characteristics of this and use a calculator to compare actually, for example, number one, the ln x graph to the log x graph. Now remember, log x is the same thing as log base 10x, and ln x is the same thing as log base e, right? Now on your calculator, there's actually two different buttons for it, so you can actually quickly graph those two out by looking at the two different buttons. I'll do log base 10, which is just a regular log button, x, We'll do that first, and then we'll do lawn after that. And I'm going to use the standard window. Let's see what we get. Here's log. Here's lawn. Okay, so notice my window here goes from, I think, negative 5 to 3. I guess I should change that on my calculator. Let's go now um, x value, negative 1 to 11. The y values, the y minimum, negative 4. Five all the way to 3, just so I can correspond to the graph that I have written in your notes. Ah, there's log. Ah, there's lawn. So let me do the log one first. Notice they all go through the point 1, 0. And log base 10 would be 1, so that would be way over here. Whoop, flattened out. And then the idea of lawn, once again, still goes through 1, 0, but... Now at 1, the value is e. e is approximately 2.7, so right about there. So you can see that the graph is like this. OK? Do you see any similarities? Yeah, I think you do. It's all the stuff that I talked to you about up here. Right here.
Now, remember how we did those transformations? It's your turn to do a transformation. So without using your calculator this time, since you know what the natural log graph looks like, can you actually graph out this lovely graph, the absolute value of natural log of x minus 2, and then write an equation for its asymptote? Hmm, what transformations occurred? Oh, if you said 2 to the right, I'm very happy. And then if you said the absolute value of that, yes, that's true. So what does the absolute value actually mean, though? Yes, everything that is negative. So negative y values are reflected to become positive y values. Good. And in this case, you want to do the 2 to the right first, because it's inside the absolute value, and then at the end, do the absolute value. Okay? I want you to try this yourself. Okay? Go for it. And then come back and check your answer with mine. to the right and graphed out your asymptote here, move that point one comma zero, and you did something like this, that would be good. But that's actually just the natural log of x minus two. I want you to put the absolute value on top of that. So what happens after that? Yes, we said everything that is negative gets reflected, so up here, doo -doo -doo. goodbye, goodbye. And there you have it. There's your graph of y equals to the absolute value of natural log of x minus 2. And the asymptote here would be x equals to 2. Bravo. Turn the page. What's next? Ah, well, we should know this as well, that there is an exponential form and a logarithmic form. That's why a lot of people think logarithms are just exponents, because really they are. So notice that if I have a general form, I'll do this one here, x equals a to the power of y, that can be written as logarithm form y, which is the exponent, equals to log base ax. And of course, if I change a to e, we get the special form of log base e, and of course, that's just natural log. So can you quickly do examples three here, a, b, c, and change the following equations from either exponential to log or vice versa? Hmm, okay, here's an exponent, 4 equals to log base 381, nice. The exponent 0, yes, equals to log base e of 1. Ooh, what's log base e again? Uh-huh, <coughs> natural log, good, so 0 equals to the natural log of 1, perfect. And then here, uh-oh, what's my base if it's just log? If you remember, it's a common log of 10. That's correct. So that's 10 to the power of negative 1 equals the decimal 0 0.1, or 1 tenth. Good. Now, from example number 4, we just knew that from above, since e to the power of 0 equals 1, natural log of 1 equals to 0. And then, so since e to the power of 1 equals e, then the natural log of e must be equal to, that's right, 1. And it says, because the natural exponential function and the natural logarithmic functions are inverses, if we do those things back to back, like taking ln of e to the n, or e to the ln n, what would you actually expect? Yeah, you just expect it to be n. And that's what we do here. So use this idea now, please, and quickly do example number five. Remember, ln and exponentials are inverse functions done back to back. We're just left with what you started with, which is the n. What am I left with starting with? Yes, 3x. What's left? 2. And what's left here? That's right, x squared. Good. All right, things in a box must be important. Here are some properties of logarithms you should know. They are really the exponential rules in logarithmic form ln of a times b, of course, is ln a plus ln b. ln of a over b is just ln a minus ln b. And then the exponent form where I can take the n and bring it down to the front. It's 
so the exponent becomes multiplication. Here we go. Those properties are things you should know. And so can you use these properties now, please, to actually expand logarithms in example number seven or six, and then also condense them into one logarithm in example number seven? Let's see if you can do this yourself. I think this is not too hard, especially if you've learned it before already. Done. Now this one with the cube root might be a little bit tricky, but if I wrote it like this for you, will that help? Now you see that there is an exponent. I can bring the exponent down using property number three from above. And if you were to continue and say this equals to one third natural log of x squared plus natural log of one, I'll say stop, don't do that. Remember, this is not multiplication, this is addition, so do not make that fatal mistake. Erase, 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 erase. This is it, you're done. All right, condensing them into single logarithms, make sure that you also know that x and y have to be bigger than zero because we can't evaluate logs of negative numbers. Whenever I have a coefficient in the front, I'm going to now try to bring it up to the top to make it an exponent. This is now good because I have two natural logs being added together. I'm now going to use property number one to combine them together in the multiplicative state. And I usually don't like having negative exponents, so I'm just going to write it as y to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of positive 3. That's it. Woohoo! And then finally over here, if I were to do the same thing, once again, a coefficient in the front, don't like it. Let's bring it to the top of the exponent. Same thing with this 3. This looks good because lawn plus lawn, mm -hmm, I can multiply them together. And then I have lawn minus lawn. I can divide them. Done. Whoa, what happened there? done. Okay, moving on. Ooh, what about solving for x? Yes, we need to know how to solve these equations, of course. So if I want to solve for x, the idea is isolating x, so I guess I should just try to isolate x. x is on the right-hand side, that's 6. I don't want that on the right-hand side. And now here's our dilemma. x is an exponent. Well, remember that uh, exponential form and logarithmic form business? Remember how these are interchangeable? I will ask you now to just rewrite this in logarithmic form. In this case, then, the exponent is 2x minus 5, and this would be log base e with the result of y minus 6. Log base e, of course, is just natural log. And now I can actually solve for x. I know it looks a little bit messy with the natural log, but still, algebra rules apply. Adding 5. And then finally, solving for x, I will have to divide everything by 2. So ln y plus 6 plus 5 all over 2. And that's a perfectly fine answer. Actually, that's the best answer because it's an exact form. What happens in this case? Ah, two logarithms. How about combining them together? This is a subtraction, so it becomes division. And in this case, now I'm going to change from logarithmic form to exponential form. So 2 to the power of 3 <coughs> equals our expression x over x minus 8. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Now, once again, just use algebra. This is over 1. I can cross multiply, whatever you wish. I get uh, 8x minus 8 equals to x. Expand, simplify, 
solve. Ugly fraction, but nonetheless the correct fraction. And you can always double check your answers by plugging it back in to making sure they work. But I trust that I'm right. <laughs> okay. Now, there's one more kind of a property, but this is called the change of base formula. It's quite nice if you want to use it to calculate something. So, there are only two logarithm bases on your calculator. I wish all of them were there, but that would be way too many keys. So in order to evaluate a logarithm with a base that's not equal to 10, or e, you can use the change of base formula right here. And I would probably change it to log base 10, right? Log base 10x, log base 10a. Or I guess you can use ln. It doesn't really matter, because this property says b can be anything as long as the same as it is the same in the numerator and the denominator. So it doesn't really matter. All right, so in this case, can you now try example number 9 really quickly? If I ask you to find log base 7, 112, you can just do regular log 112 divided by log 7, or you can actually do ln 112 divided by ln 7, and I'm going to do both for you, so that I can show you that it doesn't matter which one you use, as long as the base and the numerator and the denominator are the same. Oh, 2.424. Can you guess what the other one's going to be? <laughs> Please say 2.424, or I just told you a lie. Would I do that to you? No. Yay, 2.424. Okay. We're actually I should round to 2.425. 2.424 or 2.425. Okay. This time now, for example, under 10, I want you to solve for x, and then I want you to find the exact value, and then also use the calculator to evaluate that exact value to give me a decimal, once again, to three decimal places. Get used to three decimal places, because that's what AP wants. Ooh, exponential, let's change into logarithmic form. It's a log base 3. The number 6 equals to my exponent, which is x plus 2 x then would be log base 3, 6, minus 2. That is the exact form. Done. Now to calculate it, I will then rewrite this as log 6 divided by log 3, minus 2. Let's hope we get a nice number. We probably won't. Log 6 divided by log 3. Enter. Yep, not a nice number. Minus 2. Negative 0.369. Okay, there you have it. And that's the review for logarithms. Okay, do some practice now, and then you're all set. It's time to start the calculus course in Unit 1. See you there.